Uh, I want to welcome everybody to the OCTAX meeting, uh, the month of December. Um, first order of business is to uh, uh, approve the minutes from uh, September 28th. OCTAX meeting, somebody want to make that motion? Uh, Dan, uh, Claudia, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's carried. Um, I don't know about your agenda. I have two items on my agenda. The, the first one is a, um, a request from uh, some of the business people uh, in the Lake George region who are attempting to put together a winter uh, program. Uh, and representing them here today is uh, Christian Dutcher. So I'm going to turn it over to him and let you walk through the application. Now, I assume you all got copies. It was sent out uh, yesterday afternoon. So you should have either gotten it yesterday or this morning. Uh, so Christian, you want to give us a rundown where you are and what you guys want to do? Sure. Good morning, everybody. Uh, a group of local business owners um, in the Lake Georgia region um, approached me having recognized the, the, the significant hit they're going to take by the cancellation of the Winter Carnival. And they were hoping to be able to put together some sort of program for the month of February to help recoup some of the uh, the pending losses that they face. And the group spans a number of different types of businesses and business owners. Um, and in short order, we've put together a program that we feel is a solid program that will definitely help stimulate heads and beds uh, throughout the month of February. It's a program that um, creates a number of incentives for people to come from outside the region. And when they arrive, the benefits that they uh, enjoy aren't just within the town of the village, but it's actually region-wide. Um, it's an assortment of benefits ranging from hotel discounts, special restaurant programs and discounts, including a restaurant crawl, um, a number of activities that they would get a choice of uh, that would be included in a package that they buy. I can go into greater detail, just sort of giving an overview. Um, those things would include perhaps a downhill skiing ticket, um, uh, tubing nearby, a uh, uh, choice of a helicopter ride if they wanted, dog sledding, uh, cross-country skiing, all sorts, all sorts of winter-related activities um, that they can choose from uh, based upon availability and their level of interest. Um, and it would also feature uh, horse-drawn carriages throughout the village um, every Saturday in the month of February, and that would be uh, free and available to them if they are uh, one of the, if they have purchased into the package. Um, the package would be sold at a significant discount for the first 500 people every weekend, and it would be $50 afterwards, be a $10 package. It's really, frankly, worth quite a bit more than 50 bucks, uh, but it would be only $10 for the first 500 and $50 for the uh, uh, other one after 500 for each for each weekend. And that's it in a nutshell. Great. Um, actually, I should, if I may, I'll, I'll go one step further. In the way in which, so the I'm, there's this group that's working together. I'd be in pulling the package together and administering it, but the marketing would be done by uh, managed marketing. Uh, the PR would be done by Mark Bean, um, and then all the, uh, the hotels and uh, those people in the, in the chamber uh, with very strong mailing lists would be pushing the message out as well. So it would be this community um, sort of collaboration that would really get behind this thing and push it out as far as we can push it with all the resources that we have. So with that, I'll, I'll sit back. Great. Uh, um, Christian, I have a couple of quick, quick questions. How, how much are they looking for? So they're looking for the, to the total cost of the program is 47. However, 7,000 of it is going to be uh, paid for by local hoteliers. So the hoteliers are helping underwrite this program uh, because they believe in it so much. Um, so the total ask from the county would be 40 grand. The revenues from the, or the net proceeds from the sales of the, uh, uh, this package, it would be a risk band effect, would, would go back to the county. It's a very important thing. So there, every weekend, a number of these packages are gonna be sold. Um, some at only $10, some at $50. Um, but the net proceeds from all of those sales would go back to the county. Okay, great. Uh, anybody have any questions for Christian? Well, uh, Christian, um, February is not predicted to be a very pretty month in terms of uh, COVID. 
Um, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah. Well, I have a lot of thoughts on that. Um, good question. So when designing the program, all of the activities that we're focused on, so I'll take a step back, recognizing that there are going to be people who do travel, but are going to be very mindful naturally and appropriately of the risks associated with COVID. We wanted to make sure that all of the program elements at the very basic, uh, at the very foundation, adhered obviously to the COVID requirements, but more importantly, going one step beyond that, making sure that they are uh, suited for uh, social distancing. For example, uh, things like, I'm not going to go one by one to these activities, but skiing or cross country skiing or snowshoeing or tubing, um, even the helicopter rides. These things are um, uh, not group endeavors. They're all individual parties, um, a couple or a family uh, engaging in that activity. Um, same with the horse carriage rides. The carriages would naturally have to only carry one, um, one family unit um, at a time. We try to steer clear of those events that would gather um, crowds of people. Um, uh, and, th and then the restaurant program, actually, the restaurants would administer uh, according to the COVID restrictions that are in place at that time. They have, uh, they have this, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Christian, uh, they have been talking to, uh, to uh, Ryan Moore about the uh, COVID requirements. Yeah, I, it's, it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth for me to say this, but <laughs> we've all been living and breathing this now for almost a year. Um, and me uh, running events, especially Medicaid, it, it's always on the forefront of my mind. And, um, you know, I, I canceled America because it's not the right, not the right fit for 2020. Um, and when I look at this program that we're looking at for Lake George, uh, the Lake George region, region so long as the, the, these basic elements are deemed safe, downhill skiing, tubing, um, riding in a carriage, so long as that type of thing is still considered to be safe, then this program, at least in my opinion, is sound. Um, you know, conditions may change, obviously. Um, everybody's predicting winter to be pretty you know, grim, but we've really focused on trying to offer only those things that somebody can do um, in a socially distance way. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Well, Mike? Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. And I'm not on the committee, but I do have two questions and a comment. The first question for Kristen. Kristen, can you uh, give us a breakdown of the... Um, 40,000, what is going on? I'm going to bring it up on my screen here. So, the, you, uh, there should be a budget that was delivered. Um, the one I have right here is delivered. You want to, well, I apologize, I may, I may have missed that. Okay. I'm, Mike, I'm happy to walk through it though. If you like. I'll go for all the supervisors to understand. Yeah. Why, why, why don't you just walk through it quickly, uh, Christian? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So let me just, I'm trying to get it all squeezed onto my screen at once while I'm talking to Zoom here in a second. So the horse strong carriages, you want to have ample carriages so that people there are, so that there are uh, long, uh, so that there aren't lines. Uh, we anticipate running them on Saturday only. Saturday only for the month of February for those carriages is a $9,000 expense. I, I might also add that the, the pace that this package has been pulled together has been very, very quick. It's been this collaboration has been great, um, but we don't have contracts signed for many of them and we have price quotes. Um, so we're operating on the good faith that those quotes remain. Um, so the, fleets, the horse drawn carriages for the month of February, Saturdays only, that's, that's a $9,000 expense. Uh, the Hoteliers, I'm just going in order of what's listed on the budget. Hotelier contribution would be a $7,000 contribution. Uh, the PR through Markian would be $1,000. The marketing of the event, the bulk of it, um, or at least uh, the, the real sophisticated uh, marketing is going out through managed marketing. Uh, the rest of us with all of our email lists will be pushing out the message as well. Uh, insurance for the event is uh, a $2,000 expense. The pulling together of the program and administering it, that's basically me, is 12000 The 
you may see it, 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 there's this complicated calculation, really an estimation, of what the cost of all of these free elements cost the, this program. So just to recap, when somebody comes to the area and they get this $10 pass or $50 pass, depending on which thing they buy, it includes one free activity. And the one free activity could be a helicopter ride, two hours of tubing at uh, West Mountain, a dog sled ride, a uh, downhill skiing ticket, or a significant discount on a downhill skiing ticket at uh, West or Gore. So we'll be able to ride cross country snowshoe. In any case, all of those have varying costs. And we've approximated what the volume, what percentage of the attendees will choose each one. And we've uh, prorated the cost of each of those and arrived at a cost that says when somebody arrives in town, the average cost of, each of, those, of one of those activities that they're going to take, taking into consideration all of the different pricing, is 38 bucks. So 38 bucks um, is the cost per head of this person coming to the region for that for an activity, regardless of whatever activity they choose, the average one. So when, was, when all of a sudden, when you calculate that out, it's a $47,000 uh, expense. You, let, you reduce it by 7,000, the contribution by the hoteliers, and that's how we arrive at the 40,000. Hello, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, go ahead, Mike. Um, so Christian, now, now I understand that it, basically it's 20,000 plus or thereabouts that the county is fronting the money for these discounted freebies. That's, is that correct? Is that the correct way to look at that? Yeah, and I, if I understood Steve, you're saying that the, the county is fronting the, the subsidizing or, or, or frankly paying for entirely these activities as a lure to drive people up from these metro areas to come to the weekend. So yes, if I understood your question correctly, then yes, that's what Yeah, that's it. We, we are subsidizing these discounts uh, and it's coming out of ICAX to make that happen. Um, that's right. And uh, my second question, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, um, I'm curious what our typical winter carnival take is on our tax. And I know sales tax is hard to get a handle on, but do we have any breakdown of what the our tax is we typically receive in the month of February? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Mike, is, is Mike Swan in the peanut gallery? Like I got that. Yes, I am. But uh, I guess Ryan is just. Uh, I, I have the cash flow projections from the tour of the treasurer's office right here. So um, okay. let me go back. And go ahead, Ryan. Okay. Uh, February uh, 2018, the actual was 65,581. And February 2019, uh, the actual was. Uh, ninety five thousand one forty two. Just for clarity, that's Octax receipts. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the county's portion of uh, of Octax. Excellent. Okay, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you don't mind, just the other comment. I'm fully in favor of this. It's something new. It's something that we might be able to apply in future years, in addition to the Winter Carnival. So, thank you very much for the opportunity. Great. Thank you. And yeah, I this is Lisa. I'd like to make a comment. Uh, I don't know who that is, but go ahead. <laughs> it's Lisa Grant. Oh, Lisa. I just want to let Christian know that um, the insurance for the Lake George Winter Carnival last year was $14,700. So 2000 is very much um, under uh, what the actual for the Winter Carnival was. Uh, that, yeah, I, I, I'm not surprised that they had a considerable insurance program. There's, there, there are a number of activities that are higher risk. They have racing events going on, and they're also in, um, a number of their events uh, are sending people out onto the lake. Uh, whereas everything that's here, the individual operators are carrying their own insurance, meeting the county requirements, and the vast majority of them are. Um, I don't want to say this, are <laughs> the lower risk <laughs> uh, in sending people out of the way. Point well taken, Lisa. I appreciate that. 
Uh, Supervisor Hogan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, dovetailing on that on that thought, is Mary in the boardroom? Kassane? No. I'm I'm just curious if we're subsidizing, is the <clears throat> county taking on liability here, and and will the county have the coverage necessary if if we're subsidizing this? No, you don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. It's the Octac. I don't think the, the county is, but uh, we'll certainly run it by Mary. Um, Andrea, okay. Make sure that, that I'm correct. Thank you. And I, I have a second question. Okay. Um, where's this going to come from? The forty thousand. So it's forty thousand from Octac. We're going to discuss that in a minute. Okay. Uh, okay. Andrea. Thanks. Good. It's a good question. I have uh, Rachel. Are you online there someplace? Board room, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I know it's hard to see the whole boardroom from doing these with Zoom. Uh, but if you, you don't mind, I'd like to ask a question. No, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Christian. Hi, Rachel. I'm, I'm glad to see you, and I appreciate the time that not only you've spent talking with me, but many of the community members and business owners in our community regarding possible changes to the OCTEX application. So now that you've gone through this application process, I'm looking forward to following back up and seeing what, what comments and suggestions you have with that. Uh, but really, I was so impressed during our conversation about how uh, that regional approach happens that I believe if anything could happen with my next suggestion that you know it's the group you guys have all assembled between your economic and your tourism avenues, with that partnership with government, government that would make it work. I, my specific question looks more at a regional approach, and I love that this is a new event and that we're looking at a COVID, you know, safe and um, I hate to say the words COVID friendly, but a COVID safe event. I assume um, that paperwork and that safety plan prior to approval or, or shortly thereafter, and we get a follow up from our county administrator regarding that plan. Um, but is there a way to stretch this so that if, you know, you have an event or some type of a walkthrough or an attraction on a calendar of events going on during those weekends from Glens Falls all the way up to North Creek to Thurman to all different types of, you know, each town and city in our county that would fully capitalize on, on that regional Adirondack approach, not removing anything that you have here, but maybe working with those partners um, through that process, because to me, that regional ability to, you know, connect the dots and, and it, it very well, so many of you have donated and, and cut down your costs, but I can imagine in each one of our communities, what a wonderful option we'd be able to have to tie all that together. Um, you know, I think, I think it looks incredible. We see a lot of these escape packages in other states, particularly, I think Vermont does a really good job with it. Um, you know, but I didn't know if that was something we could take a look at, um, not for purposes of whether this is approved or not today. I, I support this, but I'm wondering, as the planning is going on, getting ready for it, it, with your experience in those regional concepts, is that something that maybe we could look at and see if we could get every, you know, every one of us really on that docket to, um, to you know, illustrate how wonderful our community is? Absolutely. I, 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 when delving into this, I mean, this is this thought shouldn't have been new to me, but it really uh, it, it, one thing that I was struck by is how the breadth of things that are available and offered in a winter environment, based in in and around the Lake George region. I hate to say the Lake George region because that seems too centralized, but this program could draw avid skiers. Gore is only 35 minutes out of town. West Mountain is right around the corner. There are these adventure-seeking elements. There are these non-adventure-seeking elements. There, uh, there's just the natural beauty of the region. And the more that there are these assets that are added to this, this, this package or whatever package is offered in the future, the more that Lake George is um, displayed as the unique desti winter destination that it, that it is. And so many other options that are out there in, uh, in the winter are kind of focused toward a particular element, like skiing. You know, there are certain areas that are, that are synonymous with skiing. Lake George is not that, but it offers that. Lake George is sort of this all-encompassing suite of offerings that 
uh, some clever um, uh, marketing message can be uh, pushed out there, I think that it really could benefit. And it could be long lasting. You know, my role in this uh, is, uh, is a one year um, assistance to the community right. in the absence of the Winter Carnival. But this, what you are touching on is absolutely this long term, should be every year program that uh, can help redefine the region. And Mr. Chairman, just one more question, if I may. Uh, Christian, what you're, is that okay, Dennis? Yes, yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, one of the, the things that you're touching on, Christian, I think even perhaps that's something we could do in the short term with this and working with those leaders in those communities um, and then obviously expand upon it. But one, and with a Sarah Mannix, I see her name's on this. I know, you know, she can uh, take that, that. I think she's all things social media. It amazes me how many people she can reach with Warren County. But um the one thing that you and I have talked about in the past is that quantitative and qualitative analysis at the end. We talked about surveys and being able to bring in, whether it be an intern or different members of the chamber, whoever it might be. But I wonder if, you know, throughout these events, if there is a way to do what we've talked about before and have that informal survey happening on just a few questions, you've had success with that in the past and it might be a nice metric to really talk about how people heard about it while they're here and how do we get them back? And do they feel good about it? Do they feel safe? Uh, this, would be a great, this would be a great test bed for that program. It, 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 the, it, it, the, this, you know, this package, this concept is driven by these, the package sales, the sales of a particular package. So that is also an important metric. In other words, there will be people naturally going to the region because of this marketing message that goes out. But the, where the rubber meets the road is how many people buy into this package and spend the night. And so that 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 important piece of data, uh, I hope I'm not putting my foot in it, but I, I believe the community would be happy to share that. I'm quite confident they'd be happy to share that. So there's a very important metric that we, through this program, can share that, that demonstrates its success or not. And then additionally, what you're talking about, that, that uh, that's sort of that broad survey with, with people on the street to see what caused them to come to the region. I, I, I fully support that. And we certainly could roll that out for them. That would be great. I look forward to hearing how that goes as well and um, you know, hearing back after this is all said and done and what worked and what didn't. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Rachel. Uh, Claudia, did you want to jump in there? Thanks, Chairman. Yeah, I have two comments. One, I think this is a really cool idea. I wish we had come up with this prior to COVID, but maybe it is something that we can do down the road. But it does make me um, have the sense that maybe this is something like a, a regional winter tourism program that we should be um, even bidding out in the future, getting finding out what we as a county um, tourism department can get as, our, as the best bang for our buck and and pay for it because the idea of the the net profits um we i've not ever heard us talk about that before so that's kind of a little bit strange to me um but i do think that we should be trying to do something in the short term although i have to say i am very concerned about us um luring people here right now because february is still going to be covid concerning and I know um, Christian is saying that the individual events will be COVID safe, but you still have these people coming to our communities and from where, where are we, you know, as he's saying, we're marketing to the Metro New York area. They, they're they still having a very hard time with COVID. And I, I want us to be very careful about bringing those people here. I think we did a great job over the summer managing it, but, um, and I guess my third concern is where are we going to get this money? Cause I don't, think we have that much left in events funding um but yeah going forward if we're gonna have a robust winter tourism package um and the county really be uh funding that we should look at trying to do some sort of regional thing like supervisor Sieber said and okay one more comment what what is the county tourism department doing for our winter tourism is this going to how is this going to work with what they're already doing? Uh, I don't know specifically, but I'm sure that Joanne's been pl plugged in here along the way. And uh, uh, this is certainly something she could tout. Uh, and I agree with all of you. This, this is really a great idea. And hopefully this is just the beginning of it, that 
we'll figure out who who should be doing this and how and and uh, especially if it's successful. So, um, uh, Christian, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, I just want to say a couple of things. I absolutely think this program could be uh, rolled out in future years, perhaps internally by the county. Uh, I'm not trying to talk myself out of a gig here, but um, if, if, it's, if it's successful, and, if, and, I, and I suspect that there are going to be a lot of other partners, other venues, other activities that would like to contribute, the community can really get behind this in a very big way and push. It doesn't, uh, I don't want to, the, the, the duration of the program um, can be tailored. You, know, you can have these two weekends in February, you could have the whole month of February, you could extend it to six weekends. But in any case, it's this really strong suite of offerings. Um, and it becomes programmatic, that's easily rolled out every year. Absolutely the community, uh, the uh, county or, or entities within the county, or the bill, um, might be able to take that on. And the other is regarding the risk of COVID. There are gonna be quantities uh, sold on this package and those quantities can be limited. You know, we could dial that back if there was, uh, sentiment or science or the necessary restrictions to only sell certain numbers of these packages uh, and adjust those as we go along we could do that which is kind of a nice thing it's not just this open-ended thing we can sell x number of packages on it we can reduce that or increase that um, as the conditions on the ground uh, require it. thank you christian any anybody else john oh, i'm sorry man I have Brian Moore, Supervisor Merlino, and Supervisor Scheffler would like to speak. Okay, thank you. Who's first? <laughs> well, I, I, I go first. Hold on, John. Let, let, let him finish. Um, all right. All right. Uh, thank you all for being here. Guys. I really fully support this program 100%. And, um, I think the, one of the first things tourism has to do, I've talked to Joanne already this morning, but I'll, but I'll let her talk, but I just want to get my two cents in. I think the, one of the first most important things is to get tourism, um, Mark Behan and Mannix Marketing into our office for a couple hours to start laying out a plan for advertising. I mean, Tourism Department has easily 50,000 um, email blast people and probably five times that many on social media. So if these three organizations get together, which we tried in the summer and it worked really well, it will be successful. I like uh, Rachel's idea. Maybe at some of these events, have a pad out there. Let's get some names and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll print up some uh, flyers that they can take with them and send back to us. Uh, maybe the tourism partner or somebody else. But uh, I'll let Joey speak of what she can do. And we, we at Tourism want to really get behind this and move it forward. But again, um, with Claudia's thoughts, COVID is important. Um, you know, like, and I'm only talking about my business. Like in my business, I don't want anybody in my building unless they allow me to take their temperature and answer my questions. And it, it's worked. I haven't had any problems with it. And the same thing at these events. If they're going to come, maybe whoever's taking care of somebody's have it. The, the uh, temperature machine, we got a few of them in the county, and be able to check the people's temperature, that's the first start. And uh, I just came from the doctor this morning, I had to fill out a form, were you out of the state for in the last two weeks, were you here, were you here? It's an easy thing to fill out, it's done. But I, I like to turn it over to Joanne and let her tell you what we got planned. Okay, thank you. You're up, Joanne. Thank you, Supervisor Dickinson. Uh, so our winter season is split into uh, 2020, November, December, and then 2021. For 2020, end of the year, we are spending money on search words, um, keywords on, uh, you know, if people are searching and they're looking for winter things to do, then Warren County and the Lake George area will come up as that destination. We are being a little bit cautious right now. We had a shop local. Um, you know, bring home a little piece of the Adirondacks uh, for your holiday shopping, um, which included online shopping as well as local shopping to support our local businesses. We are doing other winter generic outdoor, um, at this point, organic media, uh, but we do have some dollars to spend through the remainder of the year. I know we're closing in on the remainder of the year. 
um, and into the new year. So it would be approximately $50,000 um, first part of the season and another 50 the second part of the season. Some of that is through workshop and some of that is out of our department. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so for the second part of the season, we have a winter video that um, our partners at Working Pictures are producing and we will continue to do social media. We have worked with the Chamber and with Mannix Marketing before on the email blasts and with social media. So we could continue to do that as well. Well, thank you. It's an aggressive program. Um, John, you had something earlier. Why don't you jump, jump in there before we... All right, all right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Christian, I, I'm just trying to get a handle on this. So I'm from New York City. I see an advertisement that Mannix put out and somehow got to me. And they're offering some kind of a package. And what's how much is the package going to cost me? And I see it's the ultimate Adirondack escape and I get one, I get a free horse-drawn carriage ride, and then I get a choice of some of the other things. It could be a helicopter ride or, or tube ride or one of the others. Well, how much is that package going to cost me? So you pay, if you're one of the first 500, you'll pay $10 for that wristband. The wristband gives you all these discounts in the hotel. I mean, these discounts in the hotels are going to likely exist anyway, but there are lots of discounts at uh, uh, restaurants. On Saturday, we'll have, it's almost like the replacement of Uber. We're going to have a number of these horses running around town to help transport the risk standard attendees here and there. Um, and that's especially beneficial when you're doing the restaurant call. And then additionally, you can choose from one of those um, uh, Adirondack activities, helicopter ride, and skiing, or tubing, or uh, whatever is your, uh, your favorite. So for $10, I get a ride uh, on a horse-drawn carriage and a choice of one of the other things that you have listed there. So it's not just the, um, it's not just a ride. So all Saturday long, imagine, you know, if you want to go to lunch, you hail a horse-drawn carriage. And then later on at dinner, you do the same thing. If you want to go back to your hotel, you do the same thing. So it's not just a ticket for a ride. It's actually replacement for public transportation, but it's only limited to the people uh, uh, who have the risk data. All right. And and I think what you're trying to do is show the people from New York City that they can get an enhanced experience up here in Lake George uh, through the package deal that we're offering them. And, and that package deal was, according to your draft budget, is going to cost 47000 right? Mm -hmm. And minus seven thousand from the hoteliers for a, a, a total budget cost of forty thousand. I'm reading your budget, and and I'm I'm just I'm just trying to get how where is the bottom line for forty seven thousand? Where's the total costs and the total? Where's the total? I don't see it on the budget. Bring up on my screen. Bear with me for one second. Unless I'm missing a page. So it is a, it's the totals of uh, horse drawn carriage, the ER, the marketing expenses, the insurance, the event management, and then it is 500. Uh, the, the expectation is that, and this is an, obviously an approximation, that it'll draw approximately 1,000 people per weekend. But on that calculation, on that spreadsheet you have, below the totals of all the activities, you'll see a $19,000 um, expense. Is that on your sheet? I see the 19. I'm looking for the total total where all the expenses are added up and they go to 47,000. So the, if you add up the 19,000 plus the expenses above, the horse drawn carriage and insurance and marketing the project management. You add all those together, less the hotelier's contribution. That's what I'm used to. Budget sheets that usually do that for me, Christian. Okay, I, I, I'd be happy to reformat. <laughs> I'm just saying. It. I'm looking for the total amount of the total costs 
and the you know should be forty seven thousand minus the seven thousand a total cost of forty thousand dollars at least in a draft budget that you have. All right. So if I went and took my calculator and added all those up, it's going to come to forty seven thousand. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I can reformat. I can present it differently and resubmit to the same budget, but just in a different look if you like. I'd be happy to do that. All right. Um, I also have uh, Supervisor Scheffler. Did do you want to jump in there? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, my question is: Is COVID is sort of on the uptick at this point in time, and we know that the southern portion of the state um, is in dire straits in regards to there in the orange category for majority of it. My concern is in February. Here in the North Country, but then let's say things take a terrible turn and goes really south. What plan has been implemented? Should this have to be canceled or postponed? And what is the county out for dollars and cents? And are we going to be reimbursed for any of this? Thank you. That's, that's a good question, uh, Christian. Yeah, that's an excellent question. That is a, it's a key question. So in the marketing of all of this, um, and this is true for all things 2020, um, we have to have that language in there that allows us to cancel the program, um, for, frankly, for any reason. But the, the, obviously, the reason would be for COVID-related reasons. Um, the expenses that the county would be out would be, and I might add, all the contracts that we sign with our service providers would also have that provision. So that should the thing get canceled prior to February, we are out no money or as little money as possible related to all the service providers. For example, the horse-drawn carriage, if we want to make sure that in the contract we say we have the right to full right to cancel before February and no additional cost. Somebody might say, if you want me to lock out February, I need a thousand dollar non-refundable deposit or something like that. So that the, it's those elements that could be uh, on the line. But the vast majority of this expense would not be because it's reimbursable for expenses that are uh, laid out as this process moves forward. So. PR and marketing, those are typically upfront costs. Those, those costs are incurred by the people who are pushing out that message. They can't recoup it. Um, insurance would be um, uh, refundable. Um, the, the, uh, the buy fee, um, I actually haven't given thought to how that would break out, but the bulk of that fee is, you know, three quarters of that fee is probably the advanced work and one quarter of it is the deliverable on uh, uh, during February. Um, but that's all prorated. Um, and then the reimbursement or the subsidizing of the activities, obviously that's all realized on site. So um, that alone is about half the expense. So to answer your question short uh, and, and succinctly, one is all of the, uh, all of the advertising will include the language that this thing could, can, and, uh, can be canceled. Um, and if I had to take a wild guess, Two thirds of the money, approximately, is refundable prior to February. So, if this thing was canceled in January, roughly two thirds of that. Would be Thank you, Christian. Um, Amanda, you gave me somebody else on that list, and I. Yeah, it was Ryan Moore. Ryan. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the question was asked about the county's liability. Uh, Ryan Dickey from the county attorney's office is here sitting next to me. He mentioned that uh, we, would, we could address the uh, indemnification through the contract. Uh, but in addition, I just wanted to say uh, foundationally, uh, when Sam Luciano came to me a couple of weeks ago to talk about the concept here, uh, there are a whole slew of uh, guidelines that the state of New York has put out under New York Forward, and just about every activity uh, that, that you could think of has some form of a guideline. Uh, they're aware of all of those requirements. As long as we're operating underneath the umbrella of the state regulation for each particular activity, uh, that 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 should be that should make put us in pretty good stead. Now, if those regulations should change um, because of uh, some uptick in COVID. Uh, the organizers of this uh, this event are well aware of that, and, and they'll be in contact with us as to what any new regulations might be. 
Um, I hope I hope me bringing this out is not throwing a wet blanket on anything, but the one piece, the one activity that is in this proposal uh, that I didn't see until this morning uh, is helicopter rides. Just want to point out that that industry is still closed by New York State. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping that that doesn't throw a major uh, a wrench into what we're trying to do here. I, I wouldn't anticipate that it would because it's part of a much broader, uh, uh, a great program that you guys have put together. But that's uh, NICS code uh, 487990. It's scenic and sightseeing transportation other. And the state of New York still has not opened that business up. That's I have to let the helicopter operator know that they're not aware. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Chairman, I, uh, Brad. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a couple of things. I think this is a great idea and it, it's really exciting to hear. Um, uh, you know, the scary part is, yes, we're right in the middle of the, uh, the COVID. Um, so I have a few things is uh, our, like cancellation insurance. Is there something out there, cancellation insurance for COVID that uh, that might be able to apply? Um, just was wondering, you know, if there's a, a way of uh, doing that. Uh, you know, some insurance companies probably had to pick it up to try to make some money. Um, and it's something to look into. And, and also, uh, right after, uh, if we do uh, happen to go to this, uh, you know, really setting up a follow-up meeting uh, right after the event where everything's fresh in our minds there to uh, to see how it uh, is worked out um, and how to move forward in uh, putting this in uh, year after year. Thank you. Good idea, Matt. Yes, Christian. Uh, regarding the cancellation insurance, that's a good question. We, we've looked at it a number of times with some of our other events, and I always end up, I always go into it thinking to myself, oh, maybe let's, let's look at it one more time and see if there's something there that could uh, help them. And every time I go to it, they are so specific. I'll give you an example. With AmeriCaid, the way in which they would ask questions would be, okay, oh, if it's canceled between 12 o'clock and 12.15, you'll be um, rain, then they want to, so they, they're very specific on the timing. It's not just a day, it's the actual time of the day. And then they want to know with great specificity, what are the thresholds that you would have to exceed? For example, um, you know, is it, it, does it exceed an inch of rain? So you, you're getting into this crazy detail that I always think I can't do it. And it's also expensive. Um, uh, but it's worth looking at COVID's obviously a different animal. And I haven't looked at insulation insurance related to COVID. Um, so I will look at that. It's worth, worth me looking at it. But every time I looked at it in the past, I wanted to pull my hair up, but I can't do it. It's just too specific. Okay, thank you, Christian. Uh, Rachel, did you have something else? I did. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think, it, you know, the question that Supervisor Shepler brought up is, um, is one that obviously is on all of our minds, but to look at that a little bit further, and I think that Brad... That brought up a really interesting point. When travelers decide to buy packages, they can purchase cancellation insurance. And now the state offers, for the first time ever in New York State, individual traveler insurance. So if travelers are coming here and they're buying a vacation package with an overnight stay, um, they're eligible to purchase through Alliance, through Travel Insured, through a multitude of different insurance companies, a uh, cancellation policy. It may not cover up to 100% for that individual traveler. And maybe this is something Ryan Moore could check out in his control room calls because it has been a push in the travel industry in years. New York State is the only state that does not allow for 100% cancel for any reason travel insurance. But if your travelers, many other countries require travelers to buy travel insurance and show proof of that. Um, because then if they do have to cancel, and it's my understanding they are making some exceptions now with COVID, they would be eligible to have that returned to them. So the county and the, the, those sponsoring agencies would not be on the hook for the money or at least you know a very large percentage of it, depending on what, if any changes have taken place in New York, um, if we're asking people who purchase these packages to buy a travel policy. So that could seriously mitigate the number of dollars that everyone is out in the event, but the uptick gets worse 
Uh, but that, you know, not looking at the county insurance aspect, but the individual traveler aspect. And I think, Sue, that's a really um, good question and one that maybe we could take it a little further just from the traveler perspective as well, which would protect us as a municipality. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. Maybe we need a little bit of advertising about the availability of the insurance. Yeah, I was I was looking at only through this narrow lens of an event manage, manager. So that Brad, your question is, is is a good one. I hadn't thought of it from the traveler side, and that's that's much more doable. And anybody else have any questions for for Christian? Yes, Supervisor Hogan. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I you know I'm I'm always in support of a regional initiative, and these are really great ideas. Um, as, as the supervisor from the town of Johnsburg, I, I can tell you that we've already been thinking about that we're gonna need help should restaurants go to 25% in accommodating the people that are gonna come here to ski anyway. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to hear that our neighbors to the south are looking at ways to ensure that the restaurants and, the, and, the, and everybody stays open. Um, having worked with this group somewhat over the summer, I know uh, that we can have a fair level of confidence in their um, their and, and and their assurance that they're going to do things the right way because they have been all along, and and we did great this summer and in part because this group of particular people have worked so hard to get the right message out there. Um, but my question for you is, you know, we are stronger as a region, um, but we also need to be safer as a region. And will the organizers of this event take responsibility for making sure that every one of these vendors has filed their safety plans as required by New York State? Um, and in addition, who's who's going to take responsibility for noncompliance in in these among the participants? So, may I, Dennis? Yes, please do. So. I'm glad you asked the question. I was thinking about this a moment ago when uh, Ryan was uh, sharing with me the, the, the realities of the helicopter operation. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder how many of these operators are simply unaware of what restrictions. I mean, it, to us, it's, it's self-evident that you have to be aware of what restrictions are applied, applied to these days in our COVID. But I wonder uh, for some of the smaller operators, certainly bigger operators, that they're aware of the ski mount is well aware of it and on top of it. But for some of these smaller operations, I think it would be incumbent upon the upon me to work with Ryan to make sure that I have the specific codes that apply to that industry and then share with the operator what they must do. And then when they become a provider of an activity for this package, um, that they that they sign something that says they are adhering to all of the, the mandates, all the guidelines. Uh, that connects the dots and they they're aware of what is required and that they are uh, binding themselves to uh, adhering to those those guidelines. So that's certainly something that we can do with that. Okay, and what about the the enforcement aspect of it? Who's who's gonna take responsibility for you know if if somebody's not complying with the rules, who's gonna take responsibility <laughs> for that? That's, you know, I think that, that's a question that Ryan, it's not Ryan, I don't think it's Ryan, but I'm going to be talking to you. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Um, Claudia, did you have a question? Yeah, thanks, Dennis. Yes, I, I do. Know, I don't know if you can hear me with my, um, we can I hear switched you. to my computer. Anyway. I, you know, Christian said that there's 7,000 coming from the hoteliers. What about other, the other organizations involved? Are there any of them contributing money from the program? And I, I'd like to know, like, is West, how are they on board? What about Gore? I mean, I don't know if they can even contribute as a state entity, but the helicopter guys, the, the sledding, the snowmobilers, are they on board and so, are they contributing money? Yeah, good question. They, the, the pace of this program, a lot has been pulled together in a very short order, but not everything's been pulled together. 
And there are a number of entities that um, uh, either haven't responded to my initial inquiry, perhaps because they haven't even gotten my voicemail yet. I mean, this is, we, we did this, we've been working on this for about two weeks or so, or actually more than that, but we've been including over the weekend. Uh, so not all the service providers are, have had an opportunity to even respond and express interest. We expect that they will. And we're likely going to add some additional attractions to this list um, uh, as they become, uh, as they become interested. Um, but yeah, I'm saying this because not everybody who is a contributing partner, whether it's financially or otherwise, uh, has, uh, has signed on to it. Uh, the overwhelming response is yes, let's do it. The hoteliers themselves, who is contributing the, the this is the, uh, the seven thousand dollars. The final list <laughs> hasn't been established. There are a number of parties who have already said, "Yep, we got it," and they'll probably cover all of it if necessary. But my guess is that those are going to be calling some other fellow hoteliers to help lessen the individual burden um, while still meeting that seven thousand dollars requirement. So that's kind of an indirect way of me saying that the list is still being pulled together, um, but the major players in the village are, are on board with it. Thank you. Anybody else? A question. Somebody spoke up there. That was Ben. Uh, Dennis, ben. One quick, quick question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Ben, Thanks, Ben. Hammer. Well, that brings up another thing, that, Christian. Like you said, people in the village are on board, but we also have a pretty vibrant downtown right now. I mean, we could be doing comparatively to to we could be doing horse-drawn carriages in the city of Glens Falls. Something to think. Yeah, and, and, and it's this is not. It's really important for me to emphasize this. This is not a. Lake George centric program, or at least it's not intended to be. It originated from some business owners in Lake George Village, but it's the, the scope of it is well outside the village. And the more that it is regional, I'm speaking on behalf of the people who have sort of originated this idea, but I'm, I know that they feel this way. The more that it is regional, the stronger the program is, the more that people come up, the more that there's, there's the more attractions there are often. So um, the whole Psychology around the program is yes, let's make it as regionally as large a footprint as possible because it's more successful. Great, good call, Ben. You got something you want to talk? Yeah, just very quickly. Again, I I appreciated receiving the information yesterday. It was exciting. Uh, it was well done. Um, I also uh, agree with those that uh, are concerned about and cautious about uh, uh, COVID protocols and, and practices going forward. Um, I've gone to just about every um, winter carnival since I moved to this region 34 years ago. And um, uh, the, the program uh, always seems to be very family oriented. And I'm not, uh, I think the $50 is a very reasonable uh, fee for um, what uh, families can, could get. But uh, this past summer, we also did very well with, um, with day trippers and I, I want to um, uh, make sure that um, that we're putting our best foot forward to individuals who may not want to buy into the um, uh, to the package um, that they'll still feel uh, that they essentially got their money's worth if they go to restaurants and and shopping and those types of things I just wanted to, if uh, Christian could speak a little bit to uh, to the basically the day trippers who are coming in for the again for the day to uh, uh, to celebrate and have a good time. So the that's I, when I when I think about I'm a very visual person and I think about what does it look like if somebody comes into the village during any period of time, let's say the month of February, is it exciting? Was it worth your trip up here? And while there are clearly advantages to having yeah and participating in the program, Lake George Village is going to be, especially with this program, a vibrant um, de destination. So is it worth it for them? I'm sure that there are going to be lots of hotel deals that are already out there that are outside of this program and restaurants that are going on outside the program. And, but the, the, what I've been tasked to do is focus on benefiting just those people who are working within this program. Um, so, okay. Not sure there's much of an answer. I don't know if that's a satisfying answer, but um, yes, I so think again, I'm, I'm support of the initiative. Uh, I just want to make sure that, um, again, uh, I don't know how many people um, will be buying into the program and how many people, uh, again, will be those just uh, 
stopping uh, by, uh, hopefully for multiple weekends, like uh, like my family does. So yeah, you've yeah. answered my question. Thank you. Supervisor Hogan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, especially since I don't sit on this committee. I appreciate you giving me so much air time. I, I don't want to shut down conversation, but it's my understanding that there's less than $10,000 available anyway. So is all this conversation just esoteric anyway? Uh, and, Andrea, uh, if nobody has any pressing questions right now, I'd like to, uh, to address, address that if I could. Uh, Lisa, are you still here? Yes, I am. Uh, how much did the Winter Carnival get l last year? Um, earlier this year, they were awarded 35000 Uh I don't have that spreadsheet for 2019 with me. Okay. Well, that, that's, that's close enough. So, uh, um, so I guess my point is, uh, you know, we had 35000 uh in our county. Uh, Octax for Winter Carnival, and uh, um, they're, they're, they're not doing anything this year. So we're basically, whatever we're going to do for them, sliding it over to this new group and see how it goes. Go ahead, uh, Supervisor Hogan. Are you, are you sure they're not coming for that money? We set a precedent this year, you know, with people who said they spent it on advertising already, so. No, they're, they're not coming for it. Okay. They're not coming in 2021, that's correct. Yeah, the Winter okay. Carnival uh, uh, ran for 50 some years. Right, but did they already spend money on advertising and they're no. gonna come looking for that? No. Okay, okay. No, they are not, Andrea. Um, Dennis. Oh. Yes? Dennis. Um, do we have the thirty-five thousand now to well? Um, we I, I want to discuss that at this point, uh, Claudia. The first thing I want to do, I <laughs> I skipped over Mike Swan's report, so I'd like to get him uh, plugged in here and have him report, and then we can talk about uh, where we are financially for this coming year. Good idea. Okay, uh, <laughs> Mike, you want to give us a rundown of where we are? Um, sure. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, as of December 11th, 2019, we collected $4,366,000. As of December 11th, 2020, we've collected $3,711,000. Um, that's a loss of about $655,000 or 17%. Um, I don't... The January figures, I don't have even a guess is what we're going to have on that because that's when we're expecting um, quite a bit of the um, short-term rentals coming in. But I, at this point, I really don't have a handle on what that's going to be. Okay. So the short-term rentals, you don't have any wild guess? You should ask wild Mike. <laughs> I, it's it's going to be very hard to tell because we're still trying to get everybody registered. And we've got a little bit that's trickled in in December. The, the push was is to try to get them to pay the last quarter of 2020, January. So, and I really don't have a handle on that because I don't even know, to be honest with you, how many we've gotten registered right at the point. We've got 800 of them out there plus that we're trying to get a handle on. Okay. Keep it up. Don't let them go. Um, Brad, did you have some? Uh, yes. <clears throat> I'm not trying to open up a can of worm or anything, but uh, since we've had so many cancellations uh, this year, are there uh, any of the towns that uh, have any money left over in their rock tax that they'd be able to, uh, you know, slide over uh, to help out? Since you're, you know, everybody's asking the county to do it. So there's no I in team. Well, uh, our, our, if we re <laughs> if we reinstate the, uh, the supplemental spending plan, I'm sure they'll have some money. But until that point, uh, no, I have I have m money left over. I, 
I normally, I, I'm not as frugal as Ron. I normally <laughs> roll over money because I have applications uh, sitting on my desk in January when I'm sworn in. Uh, and we don't get a first payment until uh, March or April. So I have money uh, so I can cover those initial uh, things, but uh, it's, it's not, that, not that much. So and plus, plus I'm going to have uh, other things that are relying on me. Um, Dan, did you have some? No. Um, no, th thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I guess the question at this point, point in time is what's in the budget. Lisa, do you do you uh, have that available? Well, you're, you're talking about 2021 events. So you budgeted 285,000 for events in 2021. So you're talking about giving 40,000 right off the top of that 285. Uh, that, that, is, that is true, uh, Lisa. Uh, but I guess my point goes back to what I said before. Uh, on that list at the county is the Winter Carnival, which is now gone. Correct. Yeah. So they were in the thirty-five thousand dollar range. So that's right. That, that's the number we're at. I, I would I would suggest we offer them that, and I would consider that to be in the budget. I'd agree with that. <clears throat> So, who asked the question? Nobody. Somebody want to make that motion that we offer them the $35,000 that's budgeted for uh, the Winter Carnival? Do you have something before they respond, Amanda? Uh, yes, Mr. Merlino, and then Mr. Garrity also. Uh, maybe I should let Mr. Gary go first, but if you want, I'd, I'd make that motion. I think it's a trade-off and it'll get this project going. We don't have to worry about it. So um, I'd like to make that motion because uh, we're very short on time and the team is working hard to get this stuff going. We got to know that we got our support uh, for them to get going. I'll make that motion. Excellent. Somebody want to second that? I will second it. Supervisor Garrity. Supervisor Gary. Yeah. Uh, excellent uh, discussion. Did you have some, Kevin? Yes, I, I wanted to make note that uh, in this case here, I think this will become a regional event awful quickly. Uh, a lot of the items they had on their plan could be run in numerous communities at the same time you ran them in uh, Lake George. So I think it's a regional event. Um, <clears throat> That being said, we also have a million dollars in our fund balance, which we keep. If we tapped even uh, $10,000 out of the fund balance of OxyTax, we're going to be okay. And, and then I want to go through a spending plan after we get this for uh, 2021. Okay. So, so I'll second it. I think it's a good, good move. Excellent. I just want to know what dollar amount you want. Well, we, we've offered them the 35 that we had for the. Uh, okay. For the Winter Carnival. Okay, I'm good with that. Whatever you think is appropriate. Keep it in the budget. Um, okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Anybody have anything further? Amanda. Mr. Chairman, Mike Weil. No, Mike, Amanda had her hand up. I'm sorry, we have Ms. Sieber and Mr. Weil here. I have questions. Okay. <clears throat> for Mr. Weil. He had his hand up before. Um, <laughs> there's a, a couple of things that I wanted to respond to. Uh, and, and I think it starts with the discussion that Supervisor Hogan brought up about compliance and enforcement. Um, we all need to think back about this spring um, when the business community jumped in and helped come up with the safety pledge and all the, the mask enforcement type of, of uh, signage and advertising and be safe and Lake George is safe. The reason why we were as successful as we were is because the business community bought into that they realized that they could win by doing just that. And I have faith in the business community and the group that Mark Bean has put together that, that actually spun this to help with compliance. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about enforcement, but uh, we didn't have huge enforcement issues in the summer in Lake George or in our surrounding communities per se. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. And as for the money, I've got a question for Christian. You know, in terms of your budget, 
you have money that the county is basically subsidizing these events for, but you also stated that the county is going to recover some of that investment from the proceeds of the sales. Is that part of the $40,000 or is there a chance that this could really be only maybe $35,000 because there's 5,000 in sales? Uh, the latter. So there is going to be some undetermined amount of revenue. Now, we don't know how successful this program is going to be. We all have high hopes. We think it's going to be successful. It sounds good. It's going to be marketed well. You certainly have the local talent to get this message out really effectively. Um, but regardless of how many sales there are, there will be some realized net proceeds that will come back to the county. 1,000? 10,000? I'm really not sure. But all, all of those net proceeds will go back to the county, which makes, us for a particular, makes it a particularly unusual program. Yeah, sorry. That's great. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, just one more quick question for Kristen. Um, it's it's important for us to regionalize this. Do you need help to make that happen, or do you think Mark's group and and we have enough resources to be able to help make that happen? I think we can always use more help. You know, I'm not going to uh, stroke people too much here, but Mark is great. Uh, the managed marketing is great. Uh, your local business owners and Joanne and the chamber, everybody's fantastic. I'm really, I'm really impressed. Um, but it's it, the timeline of this is so ridiculously tight. I mean, it should have been done. Yeah. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty, but this is a six month lead in, not a several week lead in. So I'm sure that we will need more help, Mike. I'd love to hear ideas on how others can lend a hand. I mean, what we can do is just ask the supervisors to reach out to their business communities and let them know this is going on, and reach out to you. Hopefully, we don't overwhelm you, Christian. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, I'd like to see it. Big bucks are for it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else? You said somebody else here. That was me, Mr. Chairman, Rachel. Rachel. I, I think supervisors, supervisor, oh, I can't even say Mike's name. Sorry, Mike. Um, supervisor Wild's point is well taken, but it's also. Um, you know, to be able to have that additional safety reach and that in enforcement that um, Supervisor Hogan is talking about. I also think that, you know, re the reality of that is there is a cost factor to it. Too. I mean, we can look at county assistance, you can look at, you know, working with all the towns, but there's still, there's still additional dollars. Um, one of the things I guess I'd like to see is if we use the metrics that we have in our scoring application right now, it hasn't been modified. They've asked for 40,000. They would qualify for 40,000. I mean, as we know, we've already talked today in this call about ideas like a horse ride carriage through Glens Falls. You could have a Norman Rockwell skating up in, you know, Grand Lake and ice skating. There are so many other ways that you could connect this. I just think limiting, knowing that other municipalities have given to the Lake George Carnival. I mean, Dennis and Lake George, there's always, you know, I know there's other events, but, you know, there's been the joint fund, the village fund, the town fund, even not talking about the supplemental and just the basic allotments for 2021. I would think that, Christian, if it was a regional event, you could ask all of the towns to see if they have money from events that have been canceled and not going on in those winter months through their occupancy tax for items that don't duplicate what the county is providing funding for. But I would really ask, and I don't know if Supervisor Merlino is willing to amend his motion or if Supervisor Garrity would uh, agree as a second, but for 40,000, looking at trying to make this regional and keeping in mind that safety aspect of it just seems to make sense to me. Um, Jean? I, I don't understand the question. You want to re... She wanted you to raise it to 40. Yeah. When I go to 40, I, I, that's what I uh, brought forth, to go to the 40. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought they said it was the 35. No, that was you? later on. Okay. You're suggesting the 40 for the motion? Is that what you had, Amanda? I had that we were transferring the 35,000 that was supposed to go to the Winter Carnival to this event. That, but that was after the motion. No, no, no. no. Right. Well, I'll, I'll amend the motion. I mean, give them the forty. I mean, and, uh, get it going, and uh, you know they'll bring back some of it. And uh, this is a great program because we can do something like this every year, especially if we're looking for the late fall and uh, winter. Um, something like this could be a, a good cooperative uh, adventure for everybody. Okay, Kevin, you want to second that? 
Yes, it will. Okay. So we got the resolution uh, uh, in front of us uh, for 40,000. Uh, is there any further discussion before we vote? Claudia? Thank you. This money that is coming back to us, um, is this going to be going to the general fund payment revenue to the county or we're going to be coming back to the occupancy tax fund? We're going to come back to occupancy tax. Yep. Uh, Andrea? Don Lehman says there are some comments uh, from business owners. Do you want to hear those before you call a vote? Uh, sure. Sure. Thank you, Andrea. Don? Thank you, uh, Supervisor Dickinson. Thank you, Supervisor Hogan. I was about to just start interjecting and yelling because there are <laughs> we have some comments on here. Uh, we've got uh, Kathy Munsell, uh who uh, pointed out the money is not subsidizing <laughs> hotels, only the various Warren County businesses that will engage in this program from Gore to West Mountain. The insurance is lower because the risk is at the existing businesses, not at special events run by this group. Gina Mincer points out the regional event promotion happening among Warren County Tourism, Lake George Regional Chamber and CVB, Mannix Marketing and all promotional mentions focused on town municipalities in the county. It discussed weekly at the hospitality communication group meeting. Um, Gina Mincer again pointing out that uh, Lake George Regional Chamber, CVB <coughs> and Tourism Mannix Marketing joined forces to do surveys throughout summer and fall. We can do it again. Packages could be restricted to specific zip codes. Uh, Ms. Munsell pointed out that uh, they get to be determined discounts at the hotels and restaurants that want to participate. Uh, uh, Gina pointed out that someone on the Winter Festival Committee could have been charged with compliance as noted had there been issues there. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Frank Dietrich said there is support from the business community to make this more expansive to regional participation and growth within the county to the supervisor's comments regarding outreach in the capital district for promotion and advertising. It is important that we invest in promoting in the region. Their visits supports restaurants and activities and are critical to the su success of this event. The support of this proposal by the Economic Recovery Task Force and the communication work stream led by Mark Bean is a natural connection for this event. Lots of willing contributors that are part uh, that are a part of this group. And that's what we have for comment. Great, thank you, Don. Okay, we're back. Uh, anything further? If not, I'll call, call a question. Also, all, all those in favor? Dennis, uh, this is Lisa. Um, I just wanted to point out that the occupancy tax contract is written on a reimbursement basis. And I believe uh, that I heard that um, this, uh, that the, the, um, the business owners wanted this money up front. So I wanted everybody to be aware of that. And the contract would have to be written in such a way to allow that. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So Andrea? Yes. Yeah, so I'm sorry. I was trying to unmute. I've asked this before and I'll ask it again. Are we allowed to do that? I thought we were only allowed to pay for services that we have received and goods. And I, I never really got an answer when I asked before. It's a standard contract with the occupancy tax. Most, most people are Come but this is out. this is being changed. They want it up front rather than reimbursed. No, no. Most of them they get it up front to advertise before the. Chairman, this is Chairman this is Ryan Dickey from the county attorney's office. You guys speak yeah. in here. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, just, just the, the standard. Please. The standard contracts passed by resolution. So if the board wishes to amend the contract to include upfront payments, they can do that. However, you may lose out on the force majeure provision because it indicates that we are liable for 50% of all costs expended if the event is canceled. So if the event is canceled and we're upfronting the money, we're still liable for 50% of what we allocated. So if we're in a re re reimbursement provision, we're only allowed to, hold on one second. 
we're only going to be liable for 50% of the reimbursement amount that we've received in receipts and not the amount of money that we gave up front. That makes sense. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrea, to, to finish my comment, uh, that was the problem we had with the COVID is that the money we put out to those events was used to advertise pre-event. So uh, some of them spent 75% of it before the event was canceled. That's why we gave some of that money back. So it's, it's not uncommon, Andrea. And I think the attorney put a period at the end of that sentence. Okay, is everybody good? We ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's carried. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good job, uh, Christian. I'm going to abstain. Uh, good luck. <laughs> you going to what? I'm going to abstain. I'm going to abstain for right now. Thanks. I'm not opposed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so noted. Um, Kevin, did you have something you, you wanted to... Yes, I do want to address the committee on the uh, potential for a change to the 2021 spending plan. I told you we would uh, continue to look at the revenues and continue to look at different ways of maybe rein reinstating some of the money uh, for the 2021 budget. Uh, even though we haven't seen the increase in actually tax at the end of the year, I do believe that with all the... Uh, short-term rental money that is due the county and should come in, we will see an uptick in the revenues. I do believe that uh, uh, people, people will be willing to come back to the area next summer. So I'm comfortable putting forth a plan to uh, put approximately 75% of the spending plan money back into the 2021 budget without uh, changing the budget up, just uh, reinst reinstituting 75% of the spending plan for the municipal distribution. I, uh, I'm bullish on this. I really think that oxy tax will pick up. I think our number at the end of 2019 will be better than we're, what we're showing today. We won't fully recover, um, but I am comfortable uh, making amendments to these, uh, to this budget. And I'm, uh, the special event fund, uh, I would suggest also 75% restitution of the county of special events funds. When we initially did this, we all got together as a group and decided to cut the spending. I know that it impacts at least two communities really hard, which is the village and town of Lake George would have a lot of the expenses, and then everybody took a hit. So going through this and making a few changes in the tourism budget going forward, perhaps not uh, filling the position right away in tourism, we would save some money to be able to institute some funding back to the towns. So that's what I'm proposing today. Uh, we have a sheet, uh, I believe, that we can hand out to the uh, rest of the committee that shows some of these things. Nobody's Funding like the shuttle won't get cut, Hague Fire Tower won't get cut, the, the chamber and the CBB and the safety center funding, which was reduced anyways, will still be reduced. And then uh, basis species money will be back at uh, full 125000 And Wood Park website would be uh, included for 5000 So I, I'm going to ask Ryan to chime in on this. I... This is still a work in progress, but I think it's a fair compromise, which I told the committee members I would continue to work on, and we continue to look at this. Uh, the item brought up today is, is a real good regional event. Um, so uh, that's what I'm proposing that we uh, put forth as far as the tourism budget goes, right? You want to address a couple of those? Yeah, sure. I, 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 I would agree that uh, based the treasurer's report today, uh, we have three seven. Um, you look at uh, the, I, I guess for, I, I shouldn't just make the statement, but we should, uh, uh, I'm looking at the cash flow uh, reports. If we assume that we get another $300,000 before the end of the year, uh, we'll, we'll make four, 4 million. Is that what you thought we would end up getting? Yes, I, I still think there's money out there for short-term rentals. It could be as much as 200. 
it may be a little bit less this year, but if we start collecting the way we should, and I do know that some of the short-term rentals have been paying into uh, the Airbnbs already. Yeah. If you look at last year, the treasurer listed uh, through uh, these numbers today, the 3 million seven eleven nine oh five. Uh, that compares last year through December 11th to 4 million 3,66,964. And we ended 2019 with uh, 4 million 8,64,332. Uh, so it was jotting down all these numbers earlier. So from, from this time last year through the end of the year, we did about another half a million dollars. So um, to, to get to that 4 million, another, you know, 300,000, give or take, it seems fairly on par with, um, with, uh, where we think we'll end up. The cash flow reports, uh, there's, there was a number in for the last cash flow report I looked at had our uh, year to date actual through uh, October at 3,622,000. And then the November projection was 140,000 and the December projection was uh, 294,000. So that would get you to about 4,056,000. But we'll, we'll see, I, I, I think, $4 million is a, is a good approximation. And then as, uh, as the budget officer said, um, uh, and as the treasurer mentioned, we hope to get some Airbnb revenue next year. Uh, from the virus perspective, if we get to critical mass on the vaccine by uh, the, the third quarter, uh, that would, would, I think it's reasonable to expect we can do another year at this year's baseline of $4 million and then have a stronger end of the year next year than we do this year. So, um, uh, I don't. I don't know that I would go out on a limb and say we'll get to four and a half million, but but we might get more than halfway there from, from the four million. To, I would say we'd, we'd be probably you know, four, four two five, four three, four three five, somewhere in that range. The total back of the envelope right now, uh, and uh, we'll see how the year plays out. And this, Thank you, Ryan. Dennis. These numbers include the million dollars in in our uh, surplus fund balance. For right. the IRC. So I, I, is I this is doable, and I would ask that the committee support this plan. Uh, so Kevin's made a, a resolution. There's somebody want to second it? Don't I'll make it as a resolution. Excellent. Somebody want to second that resolution? Mr. Merlino says he will second. Okay, great. Thanks, Gene. Kevin, I, I don't understand what's going on. It sounds like the budget committee discussion is moving it through occupancy tax. I, I, is this just a, a suggestion, or uh, is this something that we're going to do? Because if it's something we're going to do, I well, it still has to go to the budget committee. I'm just suggesting from an occupancy tax standpoint, making these changes and reinstituting some of the 75% into the spending plan, which is said we would continue to look at. That's all I'm putting it for. If you don't want to do it through here, we can wait and bring it to the budget committee. I would prefer we take it to budget. I'm, I'm in favor of moving something like this forward. I just, it's hard for me to follow this with just reciting numbers without seeing something in front of me and understanding the trends. Okay. Whatever, whatever uh, the chairman wants to do, I'm okay with it. I would, like, I would like to carry through on this motion and send it to the uh, uh, budget committee. So I'd like to vote on your proposal. I just have one question. You talk about the original four hundred and five thousand. Talking seventy five percent based on the four hundred and five thousand. So it wouldn't be four hundred and five thousand. It would equate to around three hundred and three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. That would be for the spending plan. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. And, uh, any further discussion? Claudia? Okay, so this isn't this wasn't on the agenda. We still don't know what our off tax money is for the through the end of 2020. And we're talking about going backwards. We didn't review anything. We didn't make any changes. We didn't try to come up with a new regional plan. We're just gonna go back to the old way. Guys, this is ridiculous. And I'm not, I am not gonna agree to this. We should at least be waiting until the next year to figure out what kind of money we have from 2020. We should be looking at what our tourism department can do for us in a, in a broader, more regional approach instead of going backwards to the old ways without doing anything differently. Kevin, I am very disappointed in you. You said you were going to look at this again and you are simply going backwards in order to buy yourself whatever 
it is, and I know what it is, but I'm very disappointed. Oh. Being none, I'll call the question. Oh, excuse me, I still have a comment. I think other supervisors did too, Mr. Chairman. Who, who is it? This is Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Yeah, go ahead, Rachel. Thanks, Dennis. I, I have a couple of questions. When is the next budget committee meeting? We'll have to schedule one. When would that be in 2020 or 2021? I don't know if we have time. Do we have time to get one in now? I guess we can do it at any time as long as we meet the criteria for the uh, you know legal notice. So what you're suggesting today isn't a matter of um, amending the budget on Friday or? Oh no, I'm not going to amend. No, this will not amend the 2021 budget. This would just okay. be instituting using fund balance that I projected we're going to get in 2021. I, I'm not so sure if it needs a resolution if it just needs a referral then to the budget committee in the past. And I thought I heard you say, Kevin, at our last, not the last budget committee meeting, that was brief, the one before that, I thought I heard you mention that we would look at maybe quarterly meetings for the budget committee, especially with those contracts coming back and letting us know how that money was being spent and, you know, our return on our investment there. Perhaps that's a time when we look at those quarterly budget meetings. I agree that this budget committee needs to meet more often. And, you know, I think I think we talked about this last time. So I, I don't know if there's a way to just have a supervisor or a while suggested have that resolution go over the budget committee. Um, it's not going to affect 2020. It will affect 2021. And I believe that we will get the revenue and we have been watching the revenue. We have some changes that we potentially make in the tourism budget. And uh, so if you want to wait to 2021, I'm okay with it. I'm just saying that we've been working on this. We've been talking about it. If you want to defer it to budget committee, we can defer it to the budget committee to 2021. But some of the towns really need this money to go forward with the events in 2021. So I don't want to delay it. We should schedule it early on. You're talking about the supplemental. The supplemental. Right, so Treasurer Swan, I know you mentioned that the off tax money, you're gonna have a better handle on the short term rentals coming in, you know, when, by the end of January, February, like that, you think that's about the time frame? It'll be about February. 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 I mean, I just, I'd like to see that budget committee meet more often. I'm only one person of 20, but, um, you know, it'd be great to see that. And maybe that's a way to get that on that agenda. That's fine. I don't, I mean, I don't know okay. what the committee thinks. Uh, Mr. Conover. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, First, I think uh, the budget officer's uh, projections are uh, correct. Uh, just for the record, um, you recall that um, being very conservative, the original number was three million. I believe in that same committee meeting, Lisa said, well, I think it might be more like three and a half. Uh, I said it was gonna be above that. Dennis, you know, because we're in this business, we know. And we knew it would be upwards of $4 million and it could actually go north of $4 million, but that's a good target. I think the target number is a good number for next year. The only activity that was part of the program uh, that was cut 100% was the supplement. I have no understanding as to why uh, some of the supervisors uh, would want to hold the towns hostage uh, for uh, uh, whatever it is they're holding it hostage for. Uh, but if we're going to do that, let's sweep the whole program all activities into uh, this uh, new consideration pot, which would include all the activities. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's return the money to the towns. 75% uh, um, is not 100%. Um, and um, I just so I, I know, uh, uh, Ryan, what, what, what are you projecting is the unobligated fund balance uh, after this move? for 2021. 20, uh, the idea of doing the deficit reduction program in OCTEX was so that we would spend about what we took in so that we wouldn't decrease at all from, from the end of the year 2019. End of the year 2019 was a million three. So, and so be, and that would be in addition, three. And that would be in addition to the million dollars that we hold in reserve for uh, Mr. Swan, is that correct? 
Yes, for cash, exactly. That million three reflects the million uh, out. Right. So, I mean, if those numbers are correct, and I have every reason to believe they are correct, uh, I, I just don't see any reason why we would hold up uh, restoring 75% of the supplement to the towns. Uh, I really don't see any reason why we would hold that up. And, um, and those that would hold it up, I would like to hear a, at least a financial explanation if that's what they're posing, a financial explanation as to why they're proposing to hold this up. Um, and I'd like them to, if they would, to please focus on the financials because if the budget officers and Mr. Ryan's numbers are correct, there's, um, this should be good news uh, that we can restore these, this funding back to the towns. Thank you. Good point. Uh, Supervisor Conover, anybody else got any? We do have a resolution. We have a second. Supervisor Wild, just briefly. Chairman, Supervisor McGowan. Um, Brad, did you have some? Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, I, I have to say, uh, this is quite shocking today, coming in at the last minute. Um, you know, overnight wasn't on the agenda, I believe, with with, with Claudia. Um, this has been a long thing. We have a lot of figures out there, a lot of projections. Um, we also have a huge pandemic that um, I've been brought um, uh, aware of um, in the past that uh, we have a lot of things that we don't know about. And, and, you know, prolonging this just to see what the figures come in, um, I am in, in full support of that. Uh, you know, another one or two months is not going uh, to kill all these towns. And I hate to rush into this uh, overnight. I, I actually, and, I, and I'm sorry for saying this, but this sounds like a political move to me. So thank you. Well, you'd have to describe political moves to me, Brad. I don't know what you're talking about. But the other thing is that I am chairman of the OCTAX committee, and I've worked on this continuously. We finally, I have, that. we finally have the uh, substantiated that we have the financials and we can reinstate this program. I don't understand what your problem is with reinstating an existing program. Supervisor Conover. It's all on projections. Yeah, I just, I just want to say we have 100, almost $160 million county budget that uh, works uh, based on anticipated revenue. We don't know what the revenue is going to be on sales tax for, for 2021, 20, uh, but we estimated it and we estimated it based upon our experiences and based upon our uh, taking a conservative approach, which Ms. Garrity uh, uh, always does. Uh, and I could, I could use mortgage tax. I could name any of a number of other revenue streams that come into our county budget based upon uh, 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 projections. Uh, based upon our experience and based upon our knowledge base and based upon our ability as managers. Uh, so this, the idea that we, uh, and I might also add the same thing applies to Octax and has always applied to Octax. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Just got one comment to make, Dennis. Kevin. Most of the, <clears throat> a lot of the, the affected towns that host many of the events will need some help going forward next year. And after I looked at what we cut from the communities, we've been working very hard to see if we could come up with a, a funding source or a semi-funding source to help the towns that have the major events. The two, two entities that get affected most is the village of Lake George and the town of Lake George, along with the other communities that get the bigger, larger amounts of sun. It's not a political stunt. You can call it what you want. I thought it was proper to, to work on something and do a compromise at 75% without putting 100% in, but it also funds the other events at somewhat the same amount that we had in 2021. Also, speaking with the tourism department, it may be holding back on filling the one position down there would generate a little bit of revenue and, and uh, cost the salaries and benefits that perhaps some of that we could be using, use some of that for events also. So those are our thoughts behind this. If the committee wants to delay this until 2021, that's fine. But we have communities are going to get, if, if the COVID turns around, we have communities are going to need extra money 
to keep the events in there, to keep them going forward. So that's my reason for it. Uh, it's not a political stunt. We've been working on this. I did talk to Supervisor Dickinson. I did talk to Supervisor uh, Conover about it. And I talked to the tourism chairman about it. So if that's a political stunt, so be it. Thank you, Kevin. Anybody else? Mike Wild, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. Thank you. I'm just a, a brief comment. Um, I'm going to respond to something that Supervisor Conover mentioned in his prior statement that it, it, that he's in support or would support a wholesale redesign of the occupancy packs program. And it's encouraging to me that this is so controversial when it brings up whenever we have a discussion about this. That I think it's about time for us to take a look at this. How do we support the towns? How do we support the major events? And how do we still have some money left over to do some strategic work also? So with your help and with some other supervisors, I'm hoping that we can move that way. Thank you. You're welcome, Mike. Mr. Conover? Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, yes. just to weigh in. I, uh, I didn't realize we were going until 11.30 today with this not being on the agenda. I've got to run, um, but I'll catch up with you about this as soon as possible. I, I just have another commitment that I need to get to. So uh, okay. I don't want to cut the discussion short, but I didn't want to. Okay. Didn't, didn't want you to wonder why you didn't hear from me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I just want to say uh, what I said was if necessary, if necessary, uh, Mr. Wild, if, if that seems to be uh, what I'm what I object to is holding holding that uh, one activity, one su supplemental funding thing hostage for some purposes I don't understand. I said at the very first meeting, why don't we wait until we know the stream? And I mean, Mr. Garrity said at that time, if the funding's there, we'll reinstate it, and that's what's happening here today. And and I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for all of your work uh, regarding this. And, and I don't see any reason why we would continue to hold this funding hostage to the towns. I really don't. And if you want to remold or rechange or whatever this program going into the future, uh, that's your prerogative. Uh, but to hold this funding uh, 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 hostage on that is, is, is just, it's just beyond me. Because we were told, the towns were told that the reason that this decision had to be made was uh, was financial. And at that time I said, we're prepared to do our fair share here in Bolton. Uh, and I'm sure the other towns felt the same way. And we lost the funding for 2020. Those contracts, written contracts, signed contracts were terminated. Every one of them was terminated. And now per the commitment that was made by the budget officer, he's reinstating the funding because he feels that the funding is there. And um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Conover. Claudia, you have something? Yeah, thanks, Dennis, Chairman. Mike, I just want to tell you that they what you are hearing right now from Conover is that they, they are not going to reevaluate this. It's going to be the same old. This current leadership structure is not going to look at anything differently. They're not going to try to find money to do a regional approach, what you were talking about. They want it to be exactly the way it has been, the money for the towns, um, money for the projects, and that's it. There won't be any money left over, Supervisor Conover. We're not holding it hostage. There is no like extra magic money sitting around. So, Mike, <laughs> that's guys, we have to take a look at this. It's not just the same old thing every single time. We're going back to the same old program. Thanks. Supervisor Conover. Uh, yeah, um, Ms. Bramer, uh, I mean, that point that's been made, I couldn't be more wrong. I mean, the fact of the matter is that you have the supervisor of Lake George and the supervisor of Bolton. Let's not forget where these funds come from. They don't just magically drop from the sky. We run 100% tourism businesses. That's what we do. That is our business. Now, you uh, receive uh, more funding in Glens Falls with Cool Arena than we receive in, 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 the town, in the town of Bolton. And we're happy that that's the case. And I supported that. And I supported that. And I supported the capital program as well for Cool Arena. Cool Arena. And I might add, I've supported any of, a, any of a number of other activities that have gone on relative to, to the OCTACs. The, the town supplement, 
the town supplement was originally developed as a package to provide funding to Cool Arena, $250,000. You can trace that. I know for a fact that's the case because I helped to put that package together. And that went through the board with 100% funding of the board, unanimous funding of the board at that time. Now, uh, you can talk about the 300, what did, that, what did, what did, what did uh, uh, the budget officer say, 305 or $310,000 against what was a $4.8 million program. And so the supervisors should, re should really ask themselves, what really is the big deal here? We're reinstating the $307,000 against a $4.5 million, what was almost a $5 million program. And we were told, we were told in the committee meeting, and Ms. Bramer, I'm quoting you, you said at that time, well, if the funding is restored, of course, we're going to restore the funding. You said that in committee at the time. You said if the funding and is we there, don't we're know going what to the restore Excuse me. I have the true. floor, Ms. Bramer. Ms. Bramer, I have the floor. You can, you, when you're recognized, you can have the floor. Not until then. I have the floor. You stated at that time, along with other supervisors, that if the funding was there, that you would vote for supporting the fund, reinstating the funding. Now I'm hearing 180 degrees the other way. So let me tell you, have you changed your mind or were you disingenuous when you said that? Claudine. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> if that is true, Ron, that we have so much money that we can, re we can reinstate the funds, why is it not on paper in front of me, showing me exactly what is happening, what the projections are, and what we have to date in the balance? We don't. I don't have any of that information in front of me. You brought it here at the last minute, and I do think it is a political maneuver. Otherwise, you would have ad added it to the agenda. And yes, I understand that that was a, a wholesale program in the past. What some of us supervisors are looking for is to create a, a new program. It's now 2020. We're looking forward. We have been for a couple of years to try to come, come up with a more regional approach. Okay. And that may mean that the towns don't get as much in supplemental funding, but I don't know that. We have to look at it and that's not gonna happen if we just continue to do the same exact thing we did every single year. Two things uh, to respond to you, uh, uh, um, Claudia. Um, just, I, I, I don't understand where you're coming from, but uh, you've already confirmed that we have the money. The, the treasurer has told you that. Uh, uh, Ryan Moore, the county uh, administrator, has told you that. Kevin Garrity, the budget officer, has told you that. The deal was that it would be reinstated if the money's there. All three of them have told you the money's there. Now, if you need the, the numbers on a piece of paper in front of you, we can supply that with you. But right now, the money is there and has been confirmed by those three people. Uh, so it, it's a current issue, not a past issue. And secondly, in my, in, in my reign of terror as a just, uh, uh, chairman of, of the OCTACs, I have always been open for suggestions. And we've done a lot of things that are different than what they were when I came here. We've changed a lot of things. We've looked at a lot of different things. We're, we're uh, bolstering the CVB. Uh, we're continuing our arduous support of of the county tourism department. Uh, we're taking care of the city of Glens Falls. We bought the transit for uh, uh, Johnsburg so they can bus people around. Um, we haven't ignored anybody and, and this program is in a constant state of flux. It's not like you're gonna stop it now and redesign it and start again. That's ridiculous. Chairman, Con I mean, uh, Supervisor Conover. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. When the supplement for the town was put into the budget, along with Cool Arena, revenues, uh, since then, revenues for the Octax program have grown by over a million dollars. I almost want to say a million and a half, but I'll be safe at a million dollars. The supplement to the town has grown. Can you see that, Claudia? Zero. Zero. We took some of that money that it grew, and we provided even more money for Cool Arena. Yeah. We provided even more money for county event 
activities. We provided uh, more money for a regional convention and visitors bureau, did we not? In fact, we created it, funded it, and then increased the funding again. The supplement to the towns during that time of over a million dollars more in revenue growth, can you see it, Claudia? Zero. You said that if the funding was there that you would support the reinstatement of the supplement. And what I'm asking you is, are you, are, have you changed your mind or are you good for your word? Because I was that committee meeting is very clear that that funding would be reinstate, reinstated if the funding was there. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Dennis. Uh, John. Yeah, thank you. I mean, historically, and I've been on this board seven years, historically, we put together a governance and financial structure that has been very successful. You know, working with the tourism department, working with the hoteliers, we have expanded our approach. It has become more regional. I think we can do more. I think the regional approach is the right way. But we currently have a governance and financial structure that's been encouraging all that. We have created a county. If you take a look at us compared to other counties, we're pretty resilient. Our drops are not as dramatic in terms of revenues coming from all tax and sales tax are not as big as some of the others. So when some people are always advocating new and new and new, you know what? New isn't always going to be better. I'm always willing to keep it open and to listen. But the bottom line is, is that the past, you know, governance and financial stru structures and strategies have been very successful. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Amanda? Mr. Garrity would like to speak. Okay, Kevin. There's two points I want to make. You as chairman agreed to look at the, the uh, funding application which we will see sometime in 2021, correct? Correct. So that's already happened. I will work with Ryan today to put something out in writing to the rest of the committee and anybody on the board of supervisors so they can look at these numbers to see how we arrived at this. Again, my whole idea is keeping my word to the towns and being able to put forth a spending plan, which would give them some kind of idea going into 2021 where I thought we would be. Call it what you may, we'll get it out to you. And uh, that's all I'm gonna say about it. I'm done talking. Are, are you, uh, your resolution still stand, Kevin? Or are you well, I put it forward, but if they don't want a resolution, they can vote, vote it down. I mean, I, I think this is good good idea to put forth, and then we'll take it to the budget committee. Whoever the budget officer is, is in 2021, they can uh, they can vet it there, or we can try to do it for the end of the year. I'm okay with anything. I have nothing to hide. It's okay. a, we'll put it out. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, we have a resolution on the floor. We have a second. Uh, Mr. Conover? I just want to restate what Ryan advise the, the committee, and that is that the unfunded, unobligated balance is $1.3 million. Let me say that again, $1.3 million. That's after, after this, after this, 1.3 million. And that's in addition to the 1 million we reserve for the county treasurer. I mean, I mean, so if, if, if there are supervisors on the board that have regional ideas or Mr. Wild wants to do some other type of activity or whatever, be my guest, advance it, advance it. It's not like there, there isn't money there. 1.3 million unobligated balance and, and, and a revenue, hopefully, a revenue we all hope will return to $5 million. So, we're in a very solid position right now. There's no reason to not reinstate the, the town funding. Thank you. Thank you. Being no further comment, um, we'll bring the question to order. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Move I'm going to abstain on this one as well, Chairman. I do appreciate Supervisor Garrity saying he'll put it on paper. Say whatever you want, but I want to see it on paper. Thank okay. you. Okay. Amanda, does that pass? Yes. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Please tell me no. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second that motion. We are adjourned. All right. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate